One of the first acts of civil disobedience at the Democratic National Convention took place on Tuesday just outside the Time Warner Cable Center. Shortly after 4 p.m., a group of 10 undocumented activists rode into uptown Charlotte aboard the No Papers, No Fear bus. The activists have been riding aboard the bus protesting the Obama administration's immigration policies. The bus left Arizona six weeks ago. The activists took part in Tuesday's protest knowing they could face deportation if arrested. They're undocumented. The Democracy Now! was there when the activists left the bus and marched to the site of the Democratic National Convention. No papers, no fear. No papers, no fear. Good afternoon. We are here to ask President Obama what his legacy will be. Will he be the president that has deported the most people in U.S. history, or will he recognize our dignity and our right to organize. For that, we are risking arrest. My name is Kitsia Esteva. I'm undocumented and unafraid. We're um, risking arrest right now to tell President Obama that he needs to put, have a position on our side, on the side of immigrants, to stop deportations, to stop to stop deportations, to stop the uh, collaboration between the police and ICE, and to recognize our civil rights and to defend them. No papers, no fear. Dignity is marching here. No papers, no fear. Dignity is marching here. No papers, no fear. My name is Rosie Carrasco. I'm here with my two daughters and my husband. We have been in this right for dignity, and we believe that we have to right to fight for our dignity. We are here because we want to make sure to send a message to President Obama. We know that we are risking arrest, but we know that it's up to the sheriff to turn us into immigration, and we know that it's up to immigration to turn us into deportation proceedings, and we know that we are facing this because the policies of the President Obama. We want to know, if we want to ask him to stop the deportations, to stop the collaboration within the police and ICE, and we will continue in organizing ourselves. We want to let families know that if you are organized, if you are on afraid, and if you have the support of their community, you will be able to fight for your civil rights and for to, your right to belong and to stay here. Thank you. My name is Hilary Unsueta. I'm 25. I'm undocumented. I'm queer, and I'm standing here next to my parents with my sister in the crowd because we want to send the message to President Obama to ask him which side he is on. It's time for him to choose whether he's going to keep deporting people or he's going to support families like mine and mixed status families who are here trying to make a better life for themselves and for all of us. This is for every family in the United States, whether they are documented or not, to continue fighting for our rights and organizing. My name is Martin Unzueta. I am documented. I've been living in this year for 18 years. I'm paid taxes, and I'm paying more taxes than City Bank. I'm here because we are again against the separation of the families, against the 289G, and against all the uh, discrimination that is, uh, the, is, this society is making against our community. <laughs> My name is Julio Sanchez. I came to this country when I was 15, undocumented. I crossed the border, and now I'm here, and I'm not afraid. I'm doing this for all my community, for all my undocumented community, because I'm tired to live every day in fear. I'm tired to not able to drive, not, not to have a driver's license, not go to school. Only why? Because I don't have a legal status, and that's not right. Everybody, use the use for being human. I have rights, and uh, and I need everybody to respect my civil rights. Right now, we are in this uh, uh, North Carolina at the DNC, and we're just trying to do a city disobedience, like uh, close the streets. And we are here in front of the DNC where all the Democrats are, and we want to, to tell them that 
They need to hear. They need to know what we need, and they need to do something about it. This is uh, we doing this uh, just to show them that we're not scared anymore. We're not afraid, and we're here, and we don't got papers, and we don't. We're not afraid. Now, if you got arrested today, would you face deportation? Yes. Education, not deportation. Education, no deportation. Education, no deportation. I'm Major Green with the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department. Can I have your attention, please? You're impeding traffic here at Fifth and College. I'm instructing you that you need to leave this intersection. You need to remove yourself from this intersection. If you do not leave, you will be arrested. You have five minutes to leave this intersection. Are you fearful your mother could be deported from this demonstration? My mother will be deported. I think the community will, will know what to do, will organize. And uh, not, not only but, uh, us, but all, all other people that are fighting will be safe because an organized community is a safe community. I need you to leave this intersection or you will be arrested for impeding traffic. If you choose to leave, you can leave by 5th Street, Forge Drive Street. Traveling west on 5th Street. Austin! street. The 10 immigrants, the 10 people who decided to take a stand today outside the Democratic National Convention, we asked each as they were going into the police wagon, as they were being handcuffed by the police, why they're doing what they're doing today. I'm tired of being undocumented. I'm tired of losing opportunity. What does it mean that you're getting arrested right now for you? Because the police and I collaborate every day. To show the community that they can organize themselves and to bring this message to President Obama for him to actually listen. Could you face deportation now that you're getting arrested? I don't know yet. That's going to be up to immigration and the sheriff. But I'm willing to risk it. Anything else you'd like to add? I am proud to be doing this with my parents. We are risking our rights because we are fighting for our rights, our right to organize, our right to be with our families. We want President Obama to stop the we have been arrested because we did civil disobedience, because we were trying to defend our families. And this is what happens every day in our community. When we don't have a license, we get stopped and we get detained. We want them to respect our dignity, to respect our civil rights, and to stop separating our families. No papers, no fear. Dignity is standing here. No papers, no fear. No papers, no fear. That's the last of the chance of those immigrants who are being arrested today, undocumented immigrants all, here just outside the Democratic National Convention. They were a daughter with her mother. They were a mother with her daughter and her husband. They were young people and they were older people. Many here for 15, 12, 10 years. One young woman who could have applied under President Obama's executive order to not be deported said if her mother is deported, the whole family is deported. And they all sat around a banner before they were arrested of a butterfly because they said a butterfly knows no borders. A butterfly is free. It's the opening day of the Democratic National Convention, and they are asking President Obama to listen to their message. They say, no person is illegal. The 10 undocumented immigrants who were arrested have been released, but as they got arrested, they knew they could face deportation. Democracy Now!'s Mike Burke spoke to Tanya Nzueta. Her father, mother, and sister were arrested during the action. It's called the No Papers, No Fear Right for Justice. Um, it began on July 29th in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, about 30-some writers started there, including myself, about six weeks ago. And towards the end, we're some 40 people from um, Phoenix, Tennessee, uh, North Carolina, Illinois, Wisconsin, Texas. Um, most of us undocumented um, and 
trying to talk to community members about what it's like to come out of the shadows, what it's like to uh, start losing fear in order to organize and how to organize so that when you come out as undocumented, um, you have power behind you. Um, we went mostly through the south of the United States. We started in Phoenix, went on to New Mexico, Texas, uh, and I'm sorry these are not all in order, but um, Phoenix, New Mexico, Texas, um, Louisiana, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, and North Carolina. Um, these are some of the states where some of the harshest anti-immigrant laws have been passed, uh, where a lot of community members, particularly those who are undocumented, don't have support, um, and where we felt the message of, of of having no papers and having no fear hasn't reached um, all of the community. I saw you uh, kissing some of the uh, the, the protesters yeah. just before they were arrested. Uh, can you talk about your relationship with some um, of them? Sure. Actually, um, my entire family, except myself, are in there. My father, uh, Martin Unzueta, my mother, Rosy Carrasco, and my sister, Ireri Unzueta Carrasco, uh, were all arrested today. They're all undocumented. And what does this mean for, as undocumented immigrants? to be arrested and what, what could this mean for them? Yeah, so um, we're in a county that collaborates with Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Um, we read an article right before we came here that said that the sheriff um, would do his job as he said it and turn anyone who is undocumented over to Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Um, from there, it's up to ICE whether they pick them up or not, depending on their various categories and criteria. Um, from what we know, um, Political pressure and community pressure affects the way that immigration and that the sheriffs work. Every single disobedience that we have had, um, starting from two years ago when undocumented youth started taking um, the, the streets and started taking political offices, no one has been deported. And then we know that deportations continue, regardless of whether it's low priority or high priority immigrants. We know that our own communities, families keep being broken apart, except when we do it publicly, except when we do civil disobedience publicly. And so for here, I think it's also a test to see um, what happens uh, when undocumented people get arrested in front of the Democratic National Convention. I think it's important to highlight that um, if it wasn't for the policies that allow collaboration between police and um, immigration enforcement, this kind of act, peaceful protest, would not risk people being put into deportation proceedings. And to me, it's a, it's a symbol of how little sometimes it takes for someone to be placed in a position where they could potentially be deported. And can you tell us a little bit about your parents and their, their story? Um, my parents, um, my sister and I came to the United States when I was 10 years old. My sister was six. Um, this was about 18 years ago. Um, we came because my dad was offered a job and offered the opportunity to regularize the status eventually. Um, we didn't know very much about the laws, um, and we, I mean, I know that my visa expired without even me knowing it, right? And, and, and suddenly I was undocumented. They've tried several, several times to, to regularize their status. My dad tried to adjust the status through his work, um, but he started organizing a union at the same time, and he ended up getting fired from that job place. Um, my mom has started that process. I myself have tried um, in the past to return to Mexico and come back with a visa, which was denied to me in 2001. And so, um, you know, meanwhile, we're, we're, we're students, we're workers. I'm, I, I just graduated from from graduate school. My sister is a uh, college graduate as well. Uh, my dad works organizing um, uh, workers who have been unfairly fired, and my mother um, works with social services, informing people about what access they have to services in the city of Chicago. And considering Mitt Romney's uh, stance on self-deportation, why did you choose not to go to Tampa? Um, to me, the difference is that the Republicans, particularly Mitt Romney, has chosen what side of history he's on. He's, he's on the side that's says that people should self-deport um, without consideration of what our history is, what our ties to the community are. Um, I think Obama still has a chance to pick whether he's going to be the person who has deported the most people in U.S. history or whether he's going to give someone um, like me, like my family, the opportunity to regularize their status. Tanya Unzueta speaking to Democracy Now! is Mike Burke. Tanya's mother, uh, Rosie Carrasco, who was on Democracy Now! yesterday, her father and her sister were among those who were arrested. Of the 10 undocumented immigrants arrested in the rain just outside the Democratic Convention yesterday, they've all been released. If you'd like to see our interview with Rosie yesterday here on the broadcast, you can go to democracynow.org.